All right, what's up, y'all? East Side War Stories. Your boy Crazy's back, man. Now, let me tell you about East St. Paul. Let me tell you about St. Paul in general. I don't like St. Paul like I don't like the police. All right? So I don't like St. Paul or St. Paul niggas, man. So, or anybody from St. Paul that claims anything in the street, right? So... I stay over off of Magnolia at the bottom of this horseshoe where it's like, you know, it's just weird, you know what I'm saying? Everything in St. Paul is designed really funny. The streets are all like weird and it just, there's it, it, no other city. I don't think that's designed as fucked up as St. Paul, Minnesota, right? As far as like how the blocks are and shit like that, right? hate St. Paul, man, so, this is actually a good little spot, if you guys are looking for a spot, I think they have like a, a night where it's like a club too, little Mexican spot over there in Richfield, aka Bitchfield, I do not recommend going to that area, but this is a good restaurant, so, I've lived in St. Paul like three times, right? I always got into a lot of fights. So I moved off of Magnolia back to the north side, right? So you know how we going to do it. I rob every drug dealer in the neighborhood that I've built up a rapport with because they're south, man, right? St. Paul niggas, man. So there's these fucking Hondurans, right, who I've been selling like, you know, we've been doing business on like dirt weed and shit. Dirt weed was like, you get rich off that shit back in the day. There's not even really a market. I mean, that was like a lucrative hustle, y'all. Believe it or not. So we're just flipping dirt weed and shit. These guys got the plug somehow because they're because they're from Honduras. You know, they got the plug with the Mexicans or whatever, right? Hate them, though. They have like a real macho, arrogant... There's like a couple of brothers, right? Maybe a third one that wasn't involved. And one was kind of older. And uh, I didn't really deal with him much, did I? I don't remember which one of them I dealt with, who like really did the business. But there was two of them, right? And they fucked up because they lived off of one of the blocks on the street that was going down to the horseshoe on Magnolia and I knew where their mother lived. Big mistake, right? So I know where y'all's mama live at, right? Dummy. Magnolia is like a bunch of apartment complex. At the bottom of the horseshoe is all apartment complexes, right? So, but everything that leads down there is, is residential houses. It's weird. So, it's easy to get trapped in there if you're, you know, so you got to be careful if you don't live there. So the Hondurans, they are already fucked up. You know, I know where your mom lives. Uh, you're soft. Juan, he wasn't soft. Remember what happened with Juan in uh, the real Tony Montana? I'm going to put a link. This is the same neighborhood, same situation. But two different connects. Juan was a fucking G. Juan was one of the hardest motherfuckers I ever met. I didn't know it until it went down, but he was. These guys were fucking soft. These niggas were soft like the polo bear, right? So, I'm just not having it. So, I move out the neighborhood, and they're suspicious. I don't know if I, if I hit Juan first or second, but they didn't know each other, so it didn't really matter, but I think I hit, I think I hit them first, yeah, I hit, we hit them first, because my guy was hella laxed when we hit Juan, and it went horrible, that's what, this is why my guy was so laxed when we tried to hit Juan, and we almost got murdered with our own gun, right? 
So this is what led up to it. As far as why my guy thought this shit was taking candy from a baby. Because it was with these motherfuckers. So they kind of got all suspicious, right? Now I had been rocking with them for probably a year, give or take. I don't remember. I had been rocking with them. They had a little connect. And I remember one day they brought me something I didn't like. And I was like, hey, man, I don't like this one. Come take it back. So when he came to take it back, I gave it back to him. I said, I don't want the money. Go get me what I want. And just gave him the shit. It was like maybe seven, eight hundred bucks for a PZ back then, right? So I'm like, here, dog. I don't even want my money back. Go get me the other one. So I put trust in him. Not really, though. I knew where his mom lived. I put trust in him, and I was like, I don't, you know, you're good. Just get me my shit back, right? So he got me my shit back, and we were all good, right? So come time to jack him, right? So I tell him, yeah, come over north. If you ever hear that shit and you're from St. Paul, you are close to death already. So you better not come. That is a no-no. Anybody tells you to come to the north side, dog, like, oh, nigga, we might as well just, it might as well just go down. Should I just kill you right here? Come on, man. Like, that's like a no-no, you guys. So I tell them, come meet me over north. I should have said south. But we had the whole block over there off of Penn and Broadway. My boy was into real estate and he owned like four or five houses. It was a fucking mess, right? Fucking just just dope boys everywhere. Nuts, right? So, man, it's that. <laughs> so, we, we tell, I call, tell him, come to the north side. In the alley where we live, right? I'm going to do this fool right where I live at. I don't give a fuck. Right? So I'm like, hey, yeah, bro, meet me over north. He's like, oh, okay, okay. And I'm like, I want like a five pack. Want a five pack, right? So I'm like, meet me over north. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, okay, you okay. And then all day, this fool kept calling me every 30 minutes talking about, oh, man, I ran out of gas. It's going to be a little bit. Oh, oh man, I, I, we got a flat tire. I mean, every fucking excuse. Man, on about the fifth or sixth excuse, my homie's like, bro, he's not coming, bro. He's not finna come, bro. This, he ain't stupid, bro. This ain't finna house. Bullshit, man. Fuck this, man. So, on about the fifth or sixth time of him just pump faking, right? I'm like, man, what the fuck are you doing, bro? I snap on him. I snap on him because this is my... This is how I would normally be doing business anyway. So I stay in my character and I snap on him like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Why you got me out here stupid like this, man? Like, what the fuck? Right? I said, man, remember that time? And so I fucked him on this. I said, bro, what about the time you gave me that bullshit and I just threw you that shit back and trusted you? The fuck? Now you don't trust me? You wasting my motherfucking time, bro? And he's like, and then he admits it. He's like, oh, I crack him, right? He's like, bro, my fault, my fault, my fault, man. I'm just a little worried, bro, you know, man. Like, you moved. I said, man, it's all the same, bro. Like, all the same. Come on, man. You know how I get this money. So I just feed him a bunch of bullshit, right? Finally, this motherfucker shows up. And it's like, so, you know what? No, he picked us up in South Minneapolis. That was where, and then once we got in the car, we're like, let's go over North. I don't, if we would have said North, but I think he knew, he knew that shit. He knew we already let him know we had to go over North, but he had to pick us up over South, right? I didn't want to jack him over South. So I'm like, let's go over North to the jungle where I know everybody on the block in the fucking five houses, right? Where I live. But my boy, this is his girl's crib, right? 
So he picks us up finally at my homeboy's girl's crib, right? And he picks us up there and we head over north, right? When we hit the north side, we turn down Broadway, right? This fucked me up, right? If this motherfucker already wasn't on my super fucking might just whack you for sport shit list, this did it. We, we, we turn down Broadway, this fool grabs a cassette tape. This is back in the day. This fool grabs a cassette tape, pops it in, right? You know what it's, You know what he started playing? Somebody guess. You know what song he started playing? When we turned down Broadway Avenue in North Minneapolis, he started, he played my posses on Broadway. By the fucking, my posses on Broadway. By Sir Mix-a-Lot. That shit was so fucking embarrassing. Like, all of a sudden, we, we take a left on Broadway. He's like, oh, I've never been on Broadway before. He grabs the tape, pops it in. All of a sudden, it's like, my posse's on Broadway. My posse's on Broadway. And I'm like, and, and he's playing this song as we're riding down Broad. I'm getting embarrassed even telling the story, right? The nigga's playing my posse's on Broadway. Thank God he wasn't singing to it, right? We pull up on Queen and Penn in the alley, right? And I've just had it with this motherfucker. So I kick it off. I, man, I know how to get down. Like, I don't play, right? So I pull out a 40. I really don't like 40s. I pull out a 40. What was it? Doesn't really matter, but fuck. I don't remember. I should remember that what this is. I pull out a 40. Fuck, was it? It might have been an HK. God, man, it might have been an HK. So, But it wasn't like the sick 45 big joint. It was kind of smaller. So I pull out a 40. I lock and load it. Boom, I let a hole. I shoot right through the floor, right through the fucking center council thing. Boom. It's like a creep. nigga's driving a Crown Vic. Should have slapped you for that. Might have been a Mercury Marquise, dog. It's the same thing. So... Boom, I shoot a hole through his floor and I stick the heat right to his face, right to his eye, right? And he does this. I stick it to his eye. Now, I'm not thinking the barrel's hot, right? So when I stick it right to his eye socket, he's like, puts his hands up and like touches the banger. I'm like, nigga, I, I pull the gun back, wham, straighten his eye. I hit him so hard, the gun, the breech kicked back, not far enough to eject the round that was in the chamber, but I hit him so hard the breech kicked back. It split his eye like a perfect circle right underneath and a, a drop of blood started coming out and then a tear came out of his eye. So t- a tear and blood came down his face and I was like, and I don't remember what I said to him. He grabbed the door and opened the door and tried to run. Mind you, the weed's in the trunk. We already got everything, dog. We got your car. We got everything, but you're not going nowhere. So he just nigga tries to run, right? Little Honduran tries to run. I grab him by the shirt, by like the back of the shirt, like a cartoon, and he starts like stretching his shirt out, right? He stretches it so far that he's about to rip out of his shirt. I let go. I'm like, nigga, run. I'm fucking smoking you, dog. Do it. Do it. Do it. The nigga gets back in the car, right? I get him back in the car. I'm like, hit the trunk, dog. My boy goes and hits the trunk. It's over. We let him go. It's done. You know, he peels off all shook up, scared. Like a little bitch. Like a little bitch, right? So, and mind you, we know you ain't never. Remember, they're already scared of North Minneapolis. You're never coming back down Broadway ever especially to try to ride on us that'll never happen right so you don't rob people in places that you live most of the time but there's rare occasions 
where you just know this person so bitch made that you just don't give a fuck. Now, he didn't know I lived in there. He didn't know I lived in on that block. But still, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I told him, yeah, this is my crib. But still, at the end of the day, he still knew, you know, the last place that we robbed his ass, last place he saw me, you know? Sometimes that's where you start is the last place you see a nigga, you know? But you'd never think that a nigga would rob you right on his own block, especially as he takes you around where I could have took him wherever to do this. I just knew we could get away with gunning him down, doing whatever we had to do on Penn and Broadway. Or no, Queen. It's actually basically Penn and Broadway, but it was Queen. It was the alley in between there. It's actually, they tore shit down. It's an apartment complex now. This is a perks of getting blasted. Handicap joint for life. You know what I'm saying? I got a titanium rod for my knee to my hip. So, so this motherfucker, right? So this motherfucker leaves, doesn't call the cops, takes it like you're supposed to. You know what I'm saying? You got robbed for some weed. Don't fucking call the cops like a dummy, right? Because they're already going to know, nigga, you got jacked for something. They didn't just do this to you for no reason, right? Just went ham on him. But, oh, oh, so in the, oh, why he jumped out of the car? I forgot why he jumped out the car. It's because my nigga from the back seat, my nigga Ice, who's with me throughout all these stories, my nigga Ice rocked him so hard from the back seat after I let off put the banger to him, then he put his hands up, and I smacked him in the eye with the banger, soon as he did that, my boy grabbed the, like, the back of the seat, and just right, never seen somebody hit somebody so hard, sitting down inside a car, he grabbed the back of the seat, and just wham, wham, just rocked him twice in the face, that caused him to try to run, right, that's what caused him to try to run, is when my boy just I mean, I don't know how he didn't knock him out. He hit him so fucking hard. And I, I didn't, like, that kind of, to me, came out of nowhere. Because, but that's just him wanting to do his part. He's older than me. But he wasn't going to sit there and watch me put in work and not do it too. He didn't need to sock him at all. So it surprised me. I was like, whoa. I know you can fight, but damn, like. Now I really know, you know, and it's like, that's the only way you really get to know people is seeing them in action. Fuck all the stories you heard about them. When you see it in action, you're like, oh, okay. All right. You are that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not hype. It's not this. It's not just, you know, a boogeyman persona you just have for no reason. Right. So my boy just rocks him. Boom, boom. Just socks the fuck out of dude He tries to run That's what caused him to try to run Sometimes when I tell these stories too fast I admit I leave shit out You know Yeah that motherfucker really I swear to God Right hand to God He put on my posses on Broadway Sir Mix a lot Mind you it's like 99 Maybe 2000 You know what I'm saying Maybe 2000 And this fool Starts banging this shit. I'm like, oh, man. Like, I'm glad that we're not really, that this isn't a real deal. You know what I'm saying? Because this dude is ridiculous. Just corny as fuck, right? I just didn't like the Hondurans, man. I just didn't like them. They were like half predators and shit, man. I just, I just really, I don't know, man. I just didn't like them, man. They acted hella hard. Talk that California shit Because you know they migrated from California to Minnesota So one day this punk tells me this story About how he was doing some shit out in Cali And he and, and something went afoul And some Mexicans took his ass out to the middle of the desert And made him dig his own grave Oh that nigga was so shook when he told me that story I know it was real So I already knew Like I knew their breaking points. I knew their weaknesses. Nigga, I know where your mom lives. So one day, one day this punk motherfucker calls my phone and starts talking shit. He's like, I'm in the fucking alley, man. Like, where you at? Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, what? So I'm like somewhere on pen, right, driving. 
had just dropped my boy off, right? I think we, we had went to the gun store. This was before I was a felon, and he ain't no felon. We go to the gun store, right? And he's like, and he's like, uh, and I had just dropped him off. And when we were at the gun store, he's like, I got a banger on me, man. Should I, what should I do? Should I? And I really just, just didn't even register with me for some dumb reason, right? And But I knew he had a banger on him. I was, think I was like leaving it in the car, right? So I had just dropped him off. I, and the fucked up shit happened between him and one of my homies, right? My homie Ice. Some fucked up shit happened between them where Ice did some foul ass shit to like one of the guys though. So our friendship was kind of like, we were always A1, but I feel like our friendship was like, kind of like this, right? Because my right hand man is a dude who did you bogus, even though you knew him before me, we were all like family, man, but he did some bullshit. He tried to make it right, but it just, it wasn't, right? So me and my guy, me and my guy G, this is the day that we got like hella tight, right? So I turn around, oh, you're talking shit. I turn around, I'm like three blocks from the crib. I don't got no hammer though. I turn around, I pull back up on my boy G. I said, bro, let me get that thing, bro. I need that. And he's like, huh? He's like, fuck that, I'm coming with you. He jumps in the car. I start heading up the block. It's only like four blocks. I start heading up the block, explaining to him the scenario. And he's like, and I'm like, bro, give me the gun, man. Like, fuck, man. Like, and I, I want to say at the time, there might not have been enough trust built up for him to just throw me a banger. That takes a lot of trust. You know, why would you give somebody that's hanging with somebody that did you bogus a gun? Even though he knew I had nothing to do with it at all. We weren't even really tight back then when that happened, you know, but it happened, you know. So he pulled some snake shit on my guy and put him in a bad scenario, right? So I'm not going to get into the details of that. So I tell G, let me get the hammer. He's like, fuck that. He jumps in the car. I'm like, bro, I'm speeding up the block. I'm like, listen, man. Give me the gun. And he's like, nah, bro. And I'm like, bro, I haven't seen you in like fucking six months. However long it's been. I'm not letting you kill somebody for me, bro. The first day we hang out. No, no, man. I can't let you do that, bro. And I'm like, give me the gun. He's like, bro, no. If bullets are going to be flying, I got to be the one doing it. I can't just roll up with no hammer. I'm like, fuck, bro, no, I'm like, fuck, I get it, all right, so I'm like, fuck, man, I'm like getting my guy into some shit that he has nothing, he has no reason being in, and I'm trying to talk him out of like, no, bro, you, I can't let you do this, you know, because mind you, we were always hella cool, but some shit happened, and it had to, this is the day we both knew we could always trust each other. Because I'm begging him for the hammer. Like, no, bro, I can't let you. No, no. He's gloved up and everything. I'm just going to wet him up. I'm not, you know, I'm not even like prepared for it all the way. This happened in a split second, right? I'm just feeling horrible though because my guy's just going to wet him, right? We pull up in the alley. I look and there's nobody there. The little motherfucker was pump faking again, man. That little motherfucker was lying. I was so fucking mad, but I was glad. And me and my boy G been like this ever since that day. That solidified our bond. That fool was going to catch a body for me. I was begging him no. And he didn't give a fuck. That's a real fucking friend to the end. I'm like, fuck. I don't know anybody that I've ever had to argue with. To put in work. I ain't never. Had nobody be like. Jump in it like. I'm always the one doing that. So that like really meant a lot to me man. You know. I'll never forget that. Ever. I'm like bro. I think he had a young daughter at the time. I'm like. No bro. Like nah man. I can't get you into this. I just need the banger. 
you're right here. They're right there, allegedly. Dog, like, I didn't want to get him. It all happened so fast, man. That's why in this street life, man, we brag about shit. We boast about shit. We glorify shit. You're motherfucking right. That's what I'm doing. Is it right? No. Do I teach this shit to my son? Fuck no. Fuck no. But I'm spewing this poison upon you. Am I a good guy or am I a bad guy? I'm telling you the truth. All these stories, there's a lesson in them though. That's why I tell them. Fuck yeah, there's pride in them. Fuck yeah, I glorify this shit. There is glory in this shit. That's all this life is about. That's all it's about. Most people, they're like conformed. They're like controlled. They're scared to fucking have their moment of glory. Fuck you and fuck the world. Nothing's going to stop me. Once I get moving, you can't stop me like a fucking tornado. You can't stop me, man. Motherfucking tycoon. Once I'm moving in action, you're not stopping me. It's hard to. I will make you kill me. Are you ready for this life? Do you want this mentality? This is just me. I can't change it. If I could, I would. And that's the most honest shit I ever could tell you guys, man. If I could change this the way I am, I would do it, man. But I can't. You got to go out how you come in, man. You can't be switching up and doing all that bullshit. Doing 180s, 360s, 720s. Nigga, you can't try that Tony Hawk shit in life. You got to be who the fuck you are and stand on it, man. Be proud of who the fuck you are. You know, if you can be, there's a lot of people where they can't be proud of what they are. The shit they do, there's no pride in it. So they hate to see a motherfucker like me. They hate it. Hate to see a motherfucker like me. You know, this video is a little longer than I would normally do a video. But you guys got to understand, man, when you're in this life, it's, it's the next phone call is going to be your ass, dog. If you pick that phone up, boom, the other end of the phone is trying to kill you, trying to jack you, trying to harm you. It's somebody that you knew your whole life, somebody that you love, somebody that you trust, somebody that you've known for years. Shit's sickening, dog. You know, <clears throat> it takes a lot for me to hit one of my guys that I've known for years but I've done it you know what I'm saying so and when I say hit I don't mean kill I'm just saying bring harm to stick up beat down any type of shit to that nature you know it takes a lot but I'll do it I don't like to do it but if you do the wrong shit to me that's why there's nobody in my passenger seat there's nobody in the back seat there's nobody left, really, that's trustworthy, man. I'm 43 years old, man. I can count the friends that I got on one hand. Most people can't count one. You know? But yeah, this shit is glorified. I am glorifying the fuck out of this. Because I'm trying to teach you a fucking lesson. But when you listen to the story. I mean. You have to be proud. That you have friends like that. That you have the ability to get down if you have to. Just all that shit man. You should be proud. I am proud. And you're not taking that shit from me. You know, 
but there's a 